and now uh, we can now uh, present uh, the two uh, two feedbacks. Um, we have uh, uh, we have um, uh, developed um, during this learning course. We we have uh, sorry yes excuse me. Sorry, I interrupt you just to say maybe before we pass to the um, to the case studies. Um, there's one question about the different types of adaptation um, actions, if you don't mind, uh, where it says that uh, we see that there's a, donc, a, a large share of the adaptations actions in Ile-de-France, uh, which are soft actions. And uh, so the question is, if, if you expect for this share to decline over time in favor of green and gray actions, once the phase of awareness, uh, analysis and planning is more advanced. So basically how, how this will evolve, this balance between uh, soft actions, uh, gray and, and green actions. If this is maybe also a marker of a lack of awareness at this stage uh, to, to pass to more operational uh, actions. Um, yes, alors what we can um, uh, analyze uh, regarding this uh, uh, adaptation action uh, is uh, the link between the, some uh, different um, uh, uh, planification. Uh, there is the idea to uh, link, uh, for example, the energy action climate plan with the uh, urban um, uh, planning uh, document. And uh, I think it's a way to prepare uh, some uh, operational uh, action, but uh, um, it takes uh, it, it, it takes time, and uh, there is a difficulty in um, the local authority because the domains are considered uh, separately often the time, and uh, I think um, the the action which um, the objective is uh, to link this uh, uh, planification. It's uh, a way to um, to to facilitate uh, the this uh, transversal transversality and to um, uh, prepare public policies to develop operational action, especially for the uh, urban planning and the um, re refurbishment. But um, we are um, we 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 can observe uh, an important needs of. Uh, uh, awareness and uh, sensibilization uh, concerning the uh, elected uh, officials. Uh, we can observe a confusion uh, between uh, mitigation and adaptation that's not facilitate the development of an adaptation uh, strategy. Um, I think now we um, there is an important uh, um, a point regarding the, the green action and the development of a nature-based solution uh, in order to refresh the, the town. And, uh, and now maybe these actions are more... Um, uh, uh, we pay attention to develop this, uh, this uh, action, which is more uh, an operational uh, um, uh, way to adapt. And maybe if I can add on that, I think what is also um, often said when we talk with the local authorities in our region, but also uh, in other European countries uh, in the context of this project, is that we see that often there is a high demand uh, to have concrete case studies for uh, solutions that have been implemented um, somewhere else to understand uh, what are the costs, what are the actual impacts, what are maybe also like a, a methodology to correctly implement uh, this solution, we see we have um, some colleagues from the uh, Regional Agency for Biodiversity, which also kind of um, monitor and um, collect uh, the kind of different projects for nature-based solutions which are being implemented in, in the regions or, or, or at the national level in France. And so they also see that sometimes there are projects uh, that are being implemented, but there will just be little mistakes uh, in uh, the way that um, the project has been planned, which finally will make it ineffective. Uh, so I think there is also uh, a high demand to have um, more knowledge, to share experience and to really have kind of um, uh, solutions that can be reproduced easily. Um, and so I think there's also just this difficulty to say, OK, we don't want to be the first ones to implement these solutions because we don't or these kind of projects because we don't necessarily understand uh, 
uh, what to do. We cannot necessarily justify this um, uh, in front of the local um, elected officials because we, we don't know, understand exactly the costs, etc. So I think uh, these are things that will also develop more and more that other case studies become available um, and that will be able to magnify also the, the solutions that once there is more experience available and that uh, it will be more easy to uh, duplicate, reproduce uh, the, these kind of projects. Okay, uh, thank you, Francisca. Um, so uh, during this uh, learning course, we have the opportunity to create some uh, uh, testimony videos, and uh, we would like to share with you the the video of uh, Cascais, which is a, a Port Portuguese local uh, authority. And so, and then Francisca will present you the video of uh, the, the the feedback of Paris. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, my name is João Diniz. I work for Cascais Ambiente in Portugal, and I'm responsible for the climate action initiatives in the city of Cascais. Today, I will share you our work on climate adaptation in our city. And uh, to let you know that we are a very rich, uh, culturally rich uh, municipality, over 100 square kilometers, 30 kilometers of coastline, and uh, one third of our area is protected landscape. So we are on the west side of the Lisbon metropolitan area. And because of all this natural resources that we have, we have um, unrivaled heritage that is completely guided, successfully guided towards tourism. But we've been facing some climate change issues in the last decade, some of them already quite visible and increasing on intensity and also frequency. So we are tackling that challenge with Tullis. So back in 2009, we've made one, what is considered one of the first assessments on local climate uh, change impacts and scenarios to a reg regionalization of uh, the climate uh, uh, impacts. But we immediately started to work. After we, have this, we had this, um, this strategy, we worked together with numerous teams from the town hall, from local stakeholders, local universities, schools and so on and citizens alike to tackle all this very broad range of initiatives. And we've done this thanks to the European Union support as well, financial support grants, but also some other national or regional uh, grants as well to implement these innovative actions that uh, municipalities have now to, to implement. However, it was by 2017 that we've developed our action plan for climate adaptation. And we've done this because we needed to have a bit more of um, a structure on our work. We need to prepare financially our work for the next uh, 13 years. And it's something that it's completely crucial for us uh, to, to implement. Um, we don't have time to, to waste on this. We have to act as swiftly as possible because this is comprised not only in the Paris Agreement by 2015, but also on the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, namely the Goal 13. So we've done workshops, we work together with a lot of, of uh, NGOs, a lot of stakeholders, and also citizens and schools alike just to help us design what is the climate structure, the climate action structure. Why is that? Because on each sector is a wide range of stakeholders that are specialized in that sector only. So we need to get the best knowledge possible towards a driven and successful action. And uh, another innovative action that we've learned is that we need to translate what is the, the scientific knowledge and language into the language that our stakeholders can relate to. So they need to understand what are the, the, the impacts that they're facing and how this will create additional risks or vulnerabilities on their own uh, line of work for the coming years. So we came out with uh, a plan that has 13 measures and each one of them will be implemented by a set of 82 actions. So this is a over 11 million euros of investment 
And we've learned that most of the adaptation actions are actually non-structured or green solutions. The gray solutions in the case of Kashkais are mostly for the water supply industry. And interestingly, they all reply very transversely to the Sustainable Development Goals by 2030. So just to give you a few examples, we have five sectors of work. So the first one was adaptation and education, where we work together with, uh, with schools to, to reach our students, to, te to reach our, uh, our teaching community, to update their knowledge, to bring the entrepreneurship um, stakeholders as well to help us to develop the green economy, the carbon neutral economy, but also to create awareness on public space. So we've done a lot of art exhibits, photographic exhibits as well. And uh, we've worked in single competitions for, for children, for adults, but also by training. So capacity building for, for workers or, or residents or even tourists in Kishkai. So everybody is invited and have an opportunity to know more about the climate action that we have, including the support, the financial support to our own NGOs for them to develop their own initiatives. So this is quite innovative because we, the municipality, are, are supporting NGOs to do their own adaptation. Uh, the second sector is water resources. And like mentioned here in our specific case, according to our human and physical geography, we need to better our water supply system to reduce water losses, but also to create uh, efficiency because, well, we are, we're facing uh, more recurrent and more severe droughts year by year. And we need to make sure that we use water as swiftly as possible, including the use of recycled water in uh, what we call non-noble activities. Then the third sector, which is civil protection and health. So this comprises a wide range of activities that go from weather and climate monitoring, which is available for every citizen around the world. You can use, even use our data to, to do your own assessments and do your own studies and it's all available online. We've been registering uh, these situations in case of floods, for example, in case of fires, how were the, the weather conditions that originated all these uh, extreme weather events and the impacts that they caused, but also through forest management, vigilance, not only in the summer, but all over the year now, because unfortunately with the droughts, this is quite required. And um, also, the, the campaigns to inform beachgoers or, or the vulnerable communities, for example, the elderly, when there's a heat wave, for example, what you should do and uh, take care of yourself on these days, for example. So these are just a few examples of what we're doing. Then um, we have the sector for ecological infrastructure and resilient urban green space. This is quite a transformative approach for us because like many cities, we are also responsible for managing the green infrastructure and uh, local green space. But what we need is to completely redesign the way that we are producing or managing these green spaces, because we need to make them more water efficient and to promote biodiversity, which is another reason that we're facing. So we've done a lot of initiatives to promote our autochthonous species. We work together with a lot of volunteers for reforestation activities. We have manuals and regulation now that help us to our professionals to adapt uh, to this new reality, but not only on these green spaces, but also, for example, on green corridors, which is one of the a few images that you see here that can also contribute uh, significantly to the quality of life and risk mitigation of climate change. Uh, and this obviously has been developed with uh, numerous stakeholders again, but also with partner municipalities, our neighboring municipalities or other cities that are working on the subject. So we can leverage our knowledge, but also share knowledge and learn from the city. So this is a completely let's call it global approach of global learning. Uh, just a few examples of what we've been doing, which is, for example, uh, green corridors that are flooded areas. And in just as soon as the, the flooding passes, all our trails or green infrastructure is already read, um, available for usage with safety for all citizens and uh, without as little damage as possible. So lastly, uh, spatial planning. So this is to make sure that our regulation allows or foments or, or is updated to the criteria that climate adaptation requires on when it comes to urban and spatial planning, but also uh, housing regulation. 
So we need to make sure that what that we understand what are the areas that are most vulnerable uh, and save them. And this is something that our master plan and other regulations have. So finally, um, because this climate action is such a transversal uh, challenge, we do feel that team coordination and uh, leveling the knowledge that people have are uh, quite an unexpected challenge that we had, but we successfully uh, surpassed it through uh, a management approach where, where uh, there's a commission that works nearly full time on this. Um, we also consider that nature-based solutions tackle most vulnerabilities. So complete, this is about greening the city and it's actually quite helpful to have this very synthetic way of, of, of uh, thinking. Um, we must include climate actions in our planning and in our regulations. So this is the only way that we can save ourselves for the future and uh, to make sure that our territory is prepared for that. And uh, finally, this is quite a transformative spirit and it's about bringing innovation to city management. And obviously everyone that works with city is keen to keep on working with this. And uh, obviously it's, it's something that we need to develop, not only the actions, but the way that we work together. And uh, this concludes my presentation. I do hope you've, uh, you've enjoyed the presentation and uh, let me know if you have any questions in the future. Thank you very much for your attention. Um, so um, we 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 have uh, shared with you this uh, this video because we think it's a good um, uh, illustration of what we've developed uh, this morning uh, regarding the notion of uh, process of adaptation, the involvement of the stakeholders, the, the to, to create a common vision. To um, uh, to organize uh, the uh, the strategy, the notion of uh, of the types of action, and we think it was a good illustration in order you can uh, project uh, yourself on your own uh, territory and your own uh, organization. Now we, uh, Francisca. Uh, 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 present you the uh, adaptation strategy of the city of Paris. It's an, another level of uh, local authority, but I think it's quite interesting uh, regarding the, um, the elements we uh, developed this morning. Um, so I share uh, my screen and uh, it's okay, uh, Francesca? Yes, okay, thank you. Yes, thank you very much, Sandra. So uh, basically the idea is not to give a complete overview of uh, uh, the whole adaptation strategy uh, implemented in, in, in the city of Paris because it would, would take a lot of time and it, it, talk, uh, it touches on a lot of different sectors and issues. Uh, for us, it was interesting maybe to focus on the issue of urban heat, which is of course a, a major challenge for uh, uh, for the city of Paris, but also for uh, the region in general, because uh, it is very dense, uh, very mineral, and so uh, the urban heat is really a, a very big problem, and uh, which is, I think, also uh, one of the effects of climate change that people are really starting, like, are already seeing, already feeling, and so it, it, it is also something that people really identify uh, with this issue of, of, of climate change, which was maybe less, um, um, less visible uh, until now. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, um, uh, what is interesting is also maybe to look at the the, the process, the way uh, the 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 city developed uh, its strategy, um, knowing that uh, um, in, in in Paris, um, uh, in France, sorry, Paris was rather early, one of the earlier uh, local authorities that. Um, started working on uh, this issue of uh, of climate change and, and adaptation. Uh, and so the starting point uh, that we could identify is maybe like the first um, local uh, climate plan, which was uh, adopted by the city of Paris in 2007. And uh, what you have to understand is that um, the, uh, the, the process of um, developing, writing uh, this very first action plan uh, was very highly influenced by an extreme weather event uh, which happened in France in 2003, uh, which was very um, one of the most important uh, heat waves 
uh, that the country um, was uh, confronted with in, in, in recent times, which uh, had a very, very um, strong uh, health uh, impact for a large part of the population, which was uh, especially um, important impact on the city of Paris, which a uh, high mortality rate uh, of, of uh, a mortality rate uh, related to um, to the extreme heat. Uh, and so it was uh, yeah, quite an um, extreme experience for France in general, but also for, for, for Paris in, in, in particular. Uh, and so this was also um, one of the reasons which contributed to, um, to the fact that the effects of extreme climate uh, were already addressed in uh, this first uh, climate plan of 2007, and that especially the issue of urban heat was really um, very much on everybody's mind uh, with a number of first actions that were taken in place, especially to have guidelines and an action plan um, to uh, react to uh, extreme heat events, for example. Uh, so yeah, that the people said, okay, we really um, want uh, to make sure that this does not happen again uh, in this way and that people will not be affected uh, in such an extreme way and that people, especially the most vulnerable, so the youngest and elderly people will, will be more protected um, in, in case of uh, extreme, uh, extreme heat waves. Um, and so um, one of the um, things that resulted of this was that the city of Paris decided or identified that they needed more information of uh, uh, on the uh, phenomenon of uh, urban heat islands. And so um, they participated in uh, a research program uh, to uh, better understand uh, this uh, phenomenon and uh, its effects on uh, the city of, of Paris. Um, yes, so um, uh, uh, after that, um, if we go to the next slide. Um, so based on the uh, results, uh, also partly um, coming from this research project, uh, there was the um, formalization of a, a climate change adaptation policy. Uh, which took place uh, between 2012 and 2015 with the, adapta with the uh, adoption of uh, the first um, strategy really dedicated to climate change adaptation in 2015. Um, and uh, it was uh, the, a strategy with um, 65 uh, actions uh, in, in an action plan um, which were aiming, uh, so actions to be implemented by uh, 2020 and others also more a long-term vision uh, with the uh, horizon of, uh, of 2050. Uh, and so it was a very uh, participative uh, process as well with a lot of different stakeholders uh, associated to uh, this process in order to identify uh, the different risks. Um, and uh, in general, it was organized around uh, four main uh, thematic axes uh, to uh, protect Parisians in the context of extreme climate events. And so then, uh, again, the link of, of what I said uh, to the extreme heat waves, to guarantee food, water um, and energy supply for the city, um, how to live uh, with climate change, so basically the, the sustainable de development of, of the city, uh, and also to uh, strengthen um, uh, solidarity uh, among uh, the population, which a specific with a specific focus on um, most vulnerable uh, populations, um, because this was also something which was identified kind of of how to assess the adaptive capacity of well of the of the population, and where you see that of course the different uh, population groups will not be confronted in the same way. Uh, to the extreme uh, climate events um, and uh, of course uh, a special focus on the elderly population but also on uh, the um, homeless population uh, which is also a big challenge um, in the city of Paris and of course also people which are the least protected uh, in uh, in the case of extreme climate events so this again kind of um, creates a link of uh, what we presented before of uh, really this more uh, socioeconomic uh, dimension of the adaptation strategy uh, that you have to understand how uh, different population groups will be affected by the measures implemented uh, and how maybe they will also have to be protected differently uh, regarding to their specific uh, vulnerabilities uh, and to make sure that they are not excluded uh, from the from the measures that are being taken which is of course a, a high risk for for uh, homeless people for example uh, if we go on to the to the next uh, slide, uh, so um, 
this uh, um, adaptation uh, uh, strategy um, was then also um, one of the elements which was, of course, taken into account into the updated um, local climate plan of the city of Paris, which was published in 2018. Uh, and so here you can see uh, an example of uh, what we were mentioning in the beginning of an integrated uh, strategy which um, combines uh, the issues of uh, mitigation on the one hand and adaptation on the other. So the objective was really to have a, a global strategy which would um, uh, uh, integrate uh, these two um, sides of, uh, of climate change. Uh, on the next slide. Um, the next step was basically to update the uh, territorial vulnerability assessment. Uh, so to update uh, the strategy that was adopted in 2015, which was then a, a, a process, uh, again, a participative uh, open uh, approach um, done between 2020 and 2021, which um, allowed to have an updated um, vision of uh, how the vulnerability had evolved in the city. And uh, if we go to the next slide, we see that, um, uh, yes, that um, a lot of different uh, climate hazards uh, were assessed uh, to better understand what their impacts were. So like I said, I will be talking a lot about extreme heat, but um, the idea was also to look about uh, uh, the impact of, of, of rainfall, of extreme uh, rain, of drought, of uh, flooding, etc., uh, etc., et but also extreme cold, for example, and to see how all of these different um, hazards uh, will evolve on the territory. And I think what is also important is uh, that there was a big focus on um, how the different systems and resources could be impacted uh, and uh, how vulnerable they are to the different climate hazards. So in Paris, this is a very big issue because, well, I think this is probably the case for most uh, big cities, which are very dense, have a very large population, uh, but a very constrained territory, which means that um, most of the resources um, are taken from outside of the actual territory of Paris. So for example, for water, for energy, from food, it will all be brought to the city from outside. So um, there is also this necessity to see uh, what, on the one hand, what the larger effects are. So also looking outside of one's territory, because this is where part or a big part of the resources are coming from. But then also how these logistic change chains, sorry, that um, manage to um, transport the different resources from the outside territories into the city, uh, how they could be affected. Because then very quickly, of course, if the if the water, uh, energy, or or food systems um, would break down. This would uh, very quickly have a very, very negative effects on uh, on the population. Uh, yeah. So this is the the, the different um, points that were uh, that were seen. Some of the big results um, or some of the the, the big um, things that uh, were found when updating this uh, vulnerability analysis uh, was to see that. Um, uh, you could really observe how the average maximal and minimal temperatures are increasing in the cities. Uh, and especially uh, one takeaway from the city was that they saw that the uh, the threshold, which is kind of very symbolic threshold of the two degrees, was already exceeded um, at the level of the city. So that they were already um, uh, yeah, really um, confronted with uh, important uh, warming. Uh, and of course, that uh, things would would um, increase and and get even worse uh, in the future. So I think this was also in terms of uh, raising awareness and communication both to the elected officials and to the the population uh, was quite important to uh, show uh, how strongly you can already observe the these changes. Um, and another takeaway, uh, which is on the next slide. Thank you. And another text um, takeaway uh, was also um, that when they compared. Um, the vulnerability assessment carried out between uh, 2012 and 2015, and now this new uh, vulnerability assessment carried out uh, in 2020, uh, that the risks that they had initially identified in 2012 were uh, actually um, accelerated uh, on a much more uh, accelerated um, calendar than what they had initially anticipated, uh, which means that basically they thought that some of the um, amplitude or extremes effects that they were in, uh, expecting for um, a time frame of about uh, 2050 would already start to occur in 2030. So um, 
I think it's a real link of maybe what we saw also in the very beginning, where we saw that a lot of you chose uh, the picture of the clock uh, to represent uh, adaptation, your representation of, of, of adaptation. And uh, this is something that uh, the city of Paris really experienced to see that, OK, we actually have less time to prepare than what we initially thought. Uh, and so we also uh, have to accelerate uh, basically the measures that we will implement to uh, face uh, these kind of risks uh, that will uh, come much earlier than than what we could have expected. So I think this is also uh, interesting to see how uh, they evolved and how they then had to adjust also their action plan to take into account a much more important amplitude of, um, of risks than what they um, initially would have expected. Um, and so uh, now maybe just to give you a few examples uh, on the next slide, yes, uh, of some of the actions that are implemented. Um, so, um, of course, uh, the, the city is uh, working a lot on uh, different solutions, uh, both um, more technological and like very um, simple solutions to uh, create shade, to uh, reduce heat uh, in uh, the urban spaces. In general, the city is very mineral uh, and there are some areas where there's a lack of, of green spaces. So then uh, the question is, yeah, what are the kind of alternative solutions that can be put in place? Uh, one uh, solution that is also being experimented both on roofs and on uh, streets is um, a type of white uh, reflective paint um, in order to better uh, reflect uh, the heat um, in summer and uh, where uh, the areas where this has been experimented, you um, they measured a real difference in terms of temperature, so that it really um, allows to reduce uh, the maximal temperature during uh, heat waves and also has um, some positive benefits, uh, co-benefits on terms of acoustics, that it would also reduce the noise on uh, streets, for example, where there are a lot of cars, then this will also um, uh, reduce the noise levels for the people that are living there. Um, another example um, that... Um, we wanted to share uh, is again uh, in the communication with the population and also communicating to them uh, where they can find uh, resources and um, to kind of increase their adaptive capacity in, in, in times of extreme heat. And so one of the tools that was uh, developed with the uh, Parisian uh, Climate Agency um, was to have an interactive map of the different uh, locations where uh, Parisians can find shade and also cool down during heat waves. Uh, so, for example, what are the public buildings where uh, people can go if they don't, uh, if their um, housing is too hot? Um, and also in the different parks and green spaces, uh, the details about the different levels of vegetation to see uh, how much cooling the different green spaces actually provide. And so on the one hand, of course, this allows um, people to better identify the places where they can go uh, when it gets too hot uh, in their houses. Uh, but on the other hand, for the city, it also manages to see which are maybe the areas which are very densely populated, but where there's also a lack uh, of green spaces or other cooling options uh, that have to be developed to make sure that everybody has access uh, to this uh, to these solutions everywhere in the city. Um, so, and I think the last example that I wanted to share uh, is on the next. Uh, yes, is about basically, of course, uh, one of the main um, strategies to um, to reduce the urban heat is through greening, so that they have a strong um, policy for greening, especially on public buildings, uh, with some guidelines on how to develop uh, green roofs and, and walls. Uh, and more recently, also um, some uh, financial aids that they give to private uh, condominiums uh, to also help them finance projects uh, of greening in uh, uh, the big apartment buildings, um, which usually are much uh, harder to uh, to touch and to implement this kind of measures than, than on the public buildings. Uh, and um, one other uh, example uh, uh, for schools is uh, yeah, kind of something that uh, I was talking about also in the presentation about evaluation. Uh, so there's a project which is implemented not only in, 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 in Paris, but also in other French cities, uh, which is really focusing on the school grounds. Uh, because like I said, there um, is a real issue of um, concentrating heat uh, in the school grounds that were initially designed really to be very um, yeah, just concrete, very mineral, um, no shade, uh, nothing at all. And so that um, we could see that this was having um, uh, a lot of health impacts also for uh, the students and that it was almost yeah during peak um, heat periods, almost not possible uh, for them really to spend uh, the, the time outside. Um, 
And so this uh, has um, given rise to a project which um, is basically uh, piloted by um, a kind of local, uh, different local committees which exist in in, uh, in most territories in France for architecture and uh, urbanism, um, who uh, are really developing these projects of greening uh, the, uh, the schoolyards. And so uh, initially set out to be also participative projects, so to see how really the uh, children are using uh, the yards and um, uh, try to um, yeah, propose projects that on the one hand improve uh, the, uh, the, the quality of life for the students that are integrated into their playing patterns, etc. And on the other hand, really to um, have less sealed and mineral soils to also uh, improve the water runoff uh, for the rain, uh, and of course also have uh, much more shade and vegetation to uh, reduce the urban high, uh, heat island uh, effect in summer. And uh, so one of the aspects um, of this project was also not only to green um, the schoolyards, but also with the objective to uh, reduce the lack of green spaces in certain areas. So to say, okay, uh, we will give um, public money to help um, finance um, the renovation of the schoolyards, but um, uh, this way on the weekends or other days when the schoolyards are when the schools are not open and the yards are not being used, we also want to open them to see uh, if we can open them to the people living around to uh, basically give them access as well to additional parks and, and green spaces uh, in the heating period. So yeah, so this is also an example which has been very uh, well uh, documented, uh, which has been implemented in different cities in France. So you can also easily find uh, resources about this project uh, if you're interested in it. And I think this was uh, my last slide for, for this presentation. <laughs> OK, uh, thank you, Francisca. Uh, so uh, this uh, feedback conclude uh, this uh, uh, learning course, this crash uh, course uh, this uh, morning. Um, so you have uh, an overview of uh, what we develop uh, during this uh, learning course on adaptation. So uh, uh, we uh, we have uh, we treat not only uh, the question of indicators and data. It's important, but uh, you see we have uh, also. Uh, worked on the question of the notion, uh, uh, strategy, uh, vision, vocabulary, and uh, I hope this uh, element uh, could uh, help you to uh, organize your own uh, work and your own uh, strategy at the level of your territory and uh, organization. Um, all the team, all the team of uh, Energy Watch, uh, uh, thank you uh, to attend this morning to this uh, representation, to this presentation, and uh, don't hesitate if you have uh, any question and if you need some uh, uh, more information, uh, we will send you this uh, presentation in a few days. And uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, I don't know if Francisca, you would like to add some. A few words. <laughs> OK. Maybe just to say that um, in general, uh, in the presentation, you will see that uh, we are often referencing lots of different uh, action plan strategies from different cities in Europe and around the world, uh, different metho methods as well developed by think tanks or other kind of organizations. So all of this information you can also um, uh, find online and yeah I think really uh, it's a good idea to also take a look at uh, the different strategies or action plans developed in different cities to find uh, the concrete examples the concrete methods uh, etc that uh, so you can also uh, find all of these information uh, online which are in the presentation okay so thank you thank you and uh, have a nice day and um, and uh, thank you for your attention <laughs> <laughs>